Welcome back. I'm here with Judy Nickel, Albuquerque Master Gardener. She has found something we'd like to show you. It's a problem we're having throughout New Mexico, a problem that's injuring our ash trees. What do you have, Judy? I have a pupil case of the clear wing borer that gets on ash tree trunks. And the little moth has exited this little pupil case and has gone off to fly and lay more eggs. Right, so we often see a lot of ash trees, especially the green ash, which is dying. And we'll find these sticking out of the trunk because- Oh, I just broke it. Oh, nuts. Well, anyway, he's, uh, this will stick out of the trunk and you'll see these little things. They'll be about halfway out of the trunk in a hole that looks like it was made by a quarter inch drill bit. And, uh, and it'll be up and down the trunk. Sometimes there'll be some little sap uh, with that or a little brown coloring uh, oozing out. And you may see that uh, above that injury, the branch is dying back. If there's enough of these there, and we usually say yeah. three per foot, that means we've got yeah. a severe infestation. And they're, they're worse than that in some parts of, uh, at least in, in our area. And they're killing the trees because these, the, the larva spends the, the year inside the tree chomping inside and eating up the inside of the tree. And then when it's ready to hatch out, it makes a pupil case, comes out, and leaves part of the pupil case so you know you've had it. And, um, and then it becomes a moth and she lays eggs and more damage. And these moths look more like wasps. They're, they're clear wings and they're about the size of a wasp and a lot of people mistake them for wasps. Well, Judy, thank you. Judy, there's another problem people are asking you a lot of questions mm -hmm. about these days and it's really too late to do anything about it, isn't it? That's a, the fall webworms, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, fall webworms are all over the place. They love mulberries, they love elms, they love uh, cottonwoods. Uh, even crab apples and other kinds of trees. And they always come late in the season. So there's really not much you can do about them. And they're really not doing that much damage. There's no reason to do a lot. You know, don't go and trim the tree back drastically to get rid of them. I've seen trees ruined by people because there were webworms doing a little damage. The people did a lot of damage. Yeah, and, and the leaves aren't uh, doing their function anymore anyway. It's, it's kind of on the late side. And the tree has pretty well fed itself with mm -hmm. its leaves, so pretty soon the leaves are going to fall. And there's not that many of them. I mean, once in a great while you'll see a tree pretty much covered with them, but it's rather rare. And the other thing is not to mistake fall webworm for bagworm. Well, and bagworm look, has little tiny bags. And they look like, uh, like little ice cream cones. Right, yeah, crawling around on your uh -huh. plant. Right, and that's so what we're seeing now in the mulberries and stuff is not bagworms, it's fall webworm. And, uh, and they're not tent caterpillars either. If you consistently have a problem year after year, you can do something about this by spraying, but you want to spray in late July and early August. By the time you get into the fall, it's too late. Hey, Curtis, I know you just flinched a minute ago. What, what's, what's going on? Well, I was going through these pots, getting ready for one of our Southwest Yard and Garden programs, a question and answer and a feature on that. And I was noticing there's spider webs in here, so I was cleaning out some old spider webs. Noticed they were hard, tough, and crackly, and I said, that's a black widow spider web. And I thought, hmm, I'm reaching in here, I better look. And sure enough, she's in there. A big, she, fat mama black widow she getting had, ready. To, hasn't laid any eggs yet. She hasn't laid them yet, but she's getting ready to. And I don't want to be reaching my finger in there with her because yeah. this is one of the more venomous spiders, one of the more dangerous ones we have to watch out for. Well, all spiders have venom in them of some kind. That's true, but this one this has worse. a nerve toxin. And depending on your condition and how much venom you receive, this could be a serious bite. And your body weight. And of course, you're reaching into something like this. Gardeners are always reaching into things. And so you've got to look out for scorpions, maybe some snakes, black widow spider, and occasionally a brown recluse, but they're very rare here. Aren't they brought in from some furniture or something? Usually when someone has moved in from another part of the country where we have a very venomous brown recluse, they'll bring it in. We've got one that lives under the rocks in the desert, but it's not much of a problem. It's not as venomous. Well, and it's not in the city where people live. Not often, no. unless someone has moved in and brought it with them. Yeah. And the, the another thing to remember then is when you're going through old pots is to wear gloves. Uh, good idea. Yes, because if you're wearing gloves, at least if you, they're not going to be able to get through the leather if you have a good leather glove. So gardeners, be careful. Especially going through old pots and old stuff that's been stored over the summer or even over the winter.